All right, why don't we stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Right. Um, can we get a roll call? Okay, roll call. Dr. Randalls. Present. Miss Slade. Senora She's Slade. Present. present. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was getting a pen from <laughs> my colleague. She's on her way. <laughs> Here I am. Here. <laughs> she responded to Senora. That's good. <laughs> Dr. Felb. Present. Dr. Flores. Present. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody? Present. Mr. Ross? Present. President Baker? Here. Okay. All right, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Or. All right, everybody agree? All right, uh, we have an agenda. Um, so, well, welcome back. It's been a few Long weeks, time. so. Um, Mo and I are rusty, evidently. So. Yes, I, was. So I was busy. That was my fault. I was trying to assist my <laughs> colleagues find glasses. Yeah, so. A pen. Was it pen or glasses? So, but why don't we start with um, some celebrations? Good deal. Dr. Baker and members of the board, I would like to ask Ken Clemparents to come forward, please. Good evening. Uh, we want to celebrate the uh, significant improvement at the Roosevelt Building. You know Dr. Nakechi as it. See, uh, there are tenants of the Roosevelt Building, our only tenant, and part of the lease requires that they do all capital improvements. Uh, they had a need for a playground and uh, brought forward using Kaboom. Uh, it was a bit of a challenge because Kaboom's contracts are somewhat restrictive and dealing with a property owner that was not the, mm. the user was a little difficult so we worked through all that and uh, elnc was able to go through the process and the build and now has a playground at the roosevelt building and there's a few slides behind you and i'll run through them um while dr as shares about the the playground well, first of all, thank you so much for adding me to your agenda, and thank you for having me uh, come here. I just want to say that um, ELNC is such an emerging practice, and it shows how uh, a small group of people can rise up together and work and really change the face of early childhood in our community. And we didn't do it alone. Um, since. 2013, when I was introduced to Ken, we walked through looking at possible buildings to use, and we did come up to this. And then I reached out to uh, Superintendent Neil, and I, one thing I just said to her is that no matter what you do, you have to mother us, be our mother, be the mother of all these children that we are working with. And she took that challenge because we know that navigating the system to get ELNC working is not going to be easy. So I just wanted to publicly thank you for being our mother and continue to do that. And Ken and now John and Matthew for really supporting our work. It's taking truly a village. So it's not just the collaborative seven community anchor organization, which are Baxter, uh, Hispanic Center of West Michigan, the other way ministry, Steeple Town Neighborhood Services, United uh, Methodist Community House, and uh, SICOM. It's not just those communities, but to have Grand Rapids Public School recognizing us as a pipeline to what we do. We get them ready, we send them off, off to you, and, and it's really working. So thank you so much. So with that, we did submit a proposal to Kaboom. It wasn't easy, but again, everybody doing what it takes to get our student going. Ken and I went back and forth with a little crying and saying, <laughs> okay, give me another email. That worked, and we got 
<laughs> yeah, because Kim is like, well, you don't own the building. I said, I know that, but you do. So we kind of quasi <laughs> own the building. <laughs> so it did. Yeah. <laughs> we knew who was crying. <laughs> so it did work, and thank you so much. Uh, it's a really, I gave you a little fact sheet. Um, uh, about that. Not only we put uh, $300,000 in rehab in uh, the old Roosevelt Child Development Center, the playground was it's estimated to be over $70,000. Um, MWA Corporation <laughs> doesn't want to release everything, but we know we were told uh, at the last minute that it's over $70,000. ELNC had to do additional $24,000 to cover food. We fed people for three days because we had two days to prep, to do the prep work. Everything was cut so that in that six hours that day, everything is put together. It took a really a whole lot of manpower. Transportation, putting people back and forth. John was very handy in also helping us with Dean transportation to move people because there was no parking. So we literally have to use the churches around to be able to move our people in and out. The tree, our neighbors, well, our neighbor, <coughs> your neighbor, had a tree that is really uh, had so many uh, purple berries all over the place. We had to remove the, the tree. So the equipment and everything, really, literally working with Grand Rapids Parks to secure the equipment because all the shovel, all everything we have to bring it, kaboom, could, it wasn't able to bring all that. So we, we got everything going. We have a state-of-the-art uh, playground that is now um, affording us to not only educate the children inside the classroom, but also outside. My favorite is the outdoor uh, classroom that we have over there. At the back of the sheet that I left for you, we, have, uh, we had kaboom send us information listed are the different types of equipment. Some of them I don't even know. I didn't know that's what it's called, but that's, that's what it is right there. We have that. Um, one thing that I needed to work with uh, Ken in terms of uh, future repair, what is it needed, and based on what we were told, uh, this, the, the equipment we have are so environmentally uh, friendly because we wanted to make sure that we are keeping up with what's going on. And it's not going to cost so that much. You know, we, we were told that it's going to be about roughly $750. Uh, to be able to replenish the wood chips and, and get everything going, because the equipment are guaranteed for 15 years. So we're hoping that you know if we keep up with it, ELNC, one of the proposals I'll be making to the board of directors is to make sure that we have a playground and a, a building fund so that if anything happens, we'll be able to um, replace that uh, right away. So um, without taking so much of your time, we, we have really seen uh, positive uh, insight from that, from the staff, from the community. That was one time that we had that whole neighborhood working together from Roosevelt Park um, Association to the police department. Everybody literally came out. The, the latest uh, invitation we received from the neighborhood association and the police department is if they can use that building every now and then to have a neighborhood association meeting, just to bring everybody in there. And we literally walk both sides of the building to ask the children and the parents to be uh, watching out for the playground. So it's really interesting how the parents are reporting to us if the kids scratch the, the outdoor. But that, to me, that's what community is all about. And um, without talking so much, I just wanted again to thank you guys for um, letting us be your partner and again to um, ask you to continue to mother us and father us because we need that and our children uh, need that. Thank you. I want to thank you and Keshi. And Keshi and I spent a year together as colleagues on Leadership Grand Rapids a few years ago. Wow. And she's definitely an advocate for, for education in general, certainly our early childhood. So thanks for your work, Keshi. Thank you. Great partners. Thank you. Any comments? Yeah. Thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, public comment for board agenda items. None. There are none. Are you out there? Okay. Um, secretary's report. Okay. Okay. Believe it or not, back to school. Uh, we have a celebration coming up. The annual back to school celebration is scheduled for Thursday, August 13th at John Ballpark Zoo. If the weather is uh, inclement, City Middle School will serve as the alternative location. There will be free food, giveaways, a bounce house, and information on GRPS schools. The event opens at 4 o'clock 
and runs through 8 p.m. Uh, and so we encourage you to register at uh, 2015 back to school dot um, eventbrite.com uh, to schedule yourself uh, to come to that. And also on September 8th, uh, 2015, the first day of school or the first day of 15, 16 school year, September 8th, uh, is fast approaching. So if you're new to the area, please call Committee and Student Services at 819-2150 um, for information to register your child for school. Students also are required to wear school uniforms at GRPS. And again, that's available at www.grps.org backslash uniforms. Now, that's all the report I have. All right, thank you. Superintendent's report. Thank you, I'd like to ask uh, Larry O and John to come forward. And Dr. Baker and members of the board, um, as they come forward to uh, prepare for this conversation around the board, um, I am asking not only the board to approve um, the proposal that we are putting forward, but equally as important, I want the community to join us. I'm asking for the community to support the Grand Rapids Public Schools and join me and join us as we put forth this bond proposal for the Grand Rapids Public Schools Transformation Plan. Four years ago, we talked about um, what we were gonna do with the transformation plan. We made the promises, we kept our promises, and we are now ready to ask the taxpayers and members of this community to join us in making this happen for the schools <coughs> and for our children. We did what we said we were gonna do. Our graduation rates up, staff morale up, attendance, our assessments, everything that we said we would do, we've done. And I also made a promise to you, Dr. Baker, and to other members of this board and said that I would not ask for any additional help from the taxpayers until we could prove that we've done it. And I'm here to say that we've done it. And so tonight I am going to ask the board to accept our language and help us, help me do the right thing by these children in this district. So with that, I'm going to ask John and Larry O to present the information right. to you. Well, let me start first um, to take us back a little bit. Um, thank you, Dr. Baker, members of the board, Superintendent Neal. Um, this really goes back actually 11 years, uh, back to 2004 when phase one of the, the, the building improvement plan started. Um, but really, um, things kicked off in earnest when Teresa was appointed superintendent and led us through the transformation process that this board was unanimous in support of. And again, to reiterate what Teresa had said, um, that pledge that was made that we wouldn't ask the taxpayers or uh, the voters for anything until we could prove the success story. And, and uh, that success story is very real as the superintendent just, re just shared. And, and we have phase two of the transformation plan where this is where we go on the offensive for the first time in two decades. This is where we invest for stability and growth. Uh, we all know this. We've had the best count days. We're seeing our enrollment stabilizing. We're seeing graduation rates increase. We're seeing the test scores go up. Uh, chronic absenteeism is down. Right. We have energy and momentum, and we took this story on the road. Uh, at Just as Superintendent whether all Neil did when she was appointed uh, superintendent, she did a listening tour. And we've really been on a listening yes. tour since February, since we first presented you with the concept of the bond proposal. And, uh, you know, you've seen the PowerPoint, you know what we've done. I think we together have done 70 or 70. 80 of these across the, the community. And the response has been absolutely overwhelming. Uh, the ener Again, that energy, that excitement, people are believing again in GRPS. They're believing in the strategic direction of this district. They believe in this board. They believe in this dynamic superintendent. And when we go through and talk about the need, we talk about what we're looking to invest in, how the transformation plan has su succeeded, and what the phase two looks like. Uh, individuals were, were eager to uh, embrace it. And if anything, they're saying, they're asking us, well, when can we support this? When can we get out front? And obviously, we weren't there to ask for endorsements or anything like mm -hmm. that. We were there to share information and gather that feedback. 
And uh, we are here today to present you with the proposal that we're confident that this community can get behind. Uh, it is still at the $175 million amount. Uh, we still believe that that is, is an amount that's, that's a, ultimately a modest request, but it, we wouldn't want to ask for, for more than that. It gives the ability to address a large percentage of our infrastructure needs as well as our technology and security. By no means is this enough, but that's mm -hmm. also why as part of the pledge is that this ask for this bond is not just to ask the taxpayers to pick up the full bill. That as part of this, as was reported recently in the media, and, and as you all know, we're looking at a capital fundraising campaign as well, where we'd look to raise between 15 and 25 million dollars from private donors, just like we did with UPREP, just like we did with Blanford. We have a proven track record, so this would become a true public-private partnership to implement phase two of the transformation plan, to take this to the next level, and to be one of those first urban districts, not just in the state, but in the entire country, to be that turnaround success story to increase our enrollment, to increase our academics, to stabilize and grow. That's a benefit not just to the children that we're honored to serve, but it's a benefit to every resident taxpayer in the city. It's a benefit to this region. It's about economic development, workforce development, and quality of life. And um, now's the time, yeah. and November 3rd is the date. You, you have included in your packet the uh, a resolution that uh, we're asking the board to approve tonight. This resolution will then allow us, and attach that resolution, it's appendix or exhibit A, is the exact bond wording that'll go on the ballot. Uh, that needs to be filed with the uh, city by four o'clock on August 11th. Once filed and approved, it cannot be changed. As you can see in the, in the exhibit A, uh, we indicate this, is, this came from our bond council. Uh, in terms of the dollar amount that we're asking, uh, what it's going to be used for in general terms, and we've talked about this all along in terms of, of, of capital um, improvements, uh, technology, security, uh, those kinds of things. And then below that, as part of the ballot language, is some information lines that are required by law also. And as we've, told, as we've talked about all, all along, uh, the $175 million for an average uh, valued house for a homeowner in Grand Rapids. It's less than nine dollars a month. A, a first-year millage of 2.07, and then a, a, a millage over the life of the bond issue about 2.12. Um, we anticipate issuing the 175 million dollars in at least two issues. That's why the wording says two or more issues as we as this thing gets passed and we see what the market looks like. Obviously, we can't spend 175 million dollars quickly. That's why we'll do it in two issues. It's also is is um, cheaper for for taxpayers by doing it that way uh, and our certainly our um, financial advisor will advise us once the bond is passed in terms of, of what that looks like uh, if it is passed in november to get it to market and get the first tranche of dollars in probably we're looking uh, february early march of 2016 but there'll be a lot of work to do between passage of the bond, right. actual dollars in place in terms of firming up our plans and getting the uh, uh, instruction manager and all those all those work folks uh, lined up to begin our, our expansion and our renovation. So uh, what we need from the board tonight is the approval of the resolution so that we can file the ballot language uh, with the uh, city clerk and get this thing on the ballot for November 3rd election. Thanks. Are there any is there any discussion or questions that people have about the language, about the plan, timeline, et cetera? Uh, Mr. LeGrant. Uh, yeah, I, I've said this at previous meetings, but I think it's important for to, uh, the public to know the two things, and we've had a presentation on this, but the two things that I think are very important for the fiscal conservatives among us are, first of all, that our district has uh, been rated as incredibly uh, efficient in terms of how we use money. So we have a track record of using money carefully, and I'm confident that we have the people in place in our uh, 
uh, particularly in our physical facilities and things who are going to watch this money carefully and make sure that it's spent very, very wisely. The second is, and uh, Larry, I'm sure, could have said this and didn't, but uh, historically, this is just a really prudent time to be talking about doing this. Uh, given the historic low interest rates that we've got right now, uh, the prospect that those realistically have to go up sometime every time the Fed meets, there's discussion about raising interest rates. And so um, I think it's really prudent for us to be making this invest, this community collective investment now, um, given those overall, oh, given the overarching financial conditions we're in. Yeah, there. No, I'm really impressed as well. I mean, we needed to do this, something like this, when I got on the board, but we weren't ready to do it. Yeah. And so um, in the work that's happened over the last few years, and I hear too many stories about how people then, so seven, eight years ago, were leaving the city because of the schools. Now we're hearing people are coming back to the city because of the schools. And if we visit other school districts. Um, I visit other school districts quite a bit, and a lot of them have brand new facilities for their high schools, and um, and we need to have these. Our children deserve this as well, and it's an investment in the property. It's an investment in the city, and so everyone will benefit from this, and I'm really impressed with this. It's the right time, and um, so I'm looking forward to the possibility. Oh, Pastor Moody. As board members, are there any talking points for us when the community approaches us about this bond issue? <clears throat> Absolutely. We, you might recall, we originally shared the the long version of the talking points, but there will be a much abbreviated version. <laughs> uh, that's the elevator speech. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, so we appreciate. About right. about the airline speech. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, this is kind of a pivotal point. Once, once, you know, if if and when you vote to approve. Yeah is when we go into full-blown campaign mode. And that's when you'll see um, everything from those talking points on the informational side to what the Friends of GRPS will be doing. Good. Well, and I know that we're going to hear more about the campaign, but I'm hoping Absolutely. that we get. I see this also as an opportunity for us to have an excuse to knock on people's doors and talk to. So Absolutely. nine that's of right. us walk in the city and talking to people and seeing what the schools, what people think about our schools. That mm -hmm. it's, it's a real opportunity for a true campaign. And I think with campaigns come learning opportunities. So, so um, yeah, so maybe we got some Saturday mornings ahead of us. So um, I right. just want to be prepared for opposition. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I took a couple of notes and some things that I think will resonate with, you know, just folks in the community is um, the fact that it is a modest amount and maybe some sort of uh, reference or frame where we can, I guess, demonstrate what makes it a modest amount mm -hmm. probably would be helpful. Um, the two issues piece, I think, is also helpful in that we're doing due diligence to try to make sure we save the community money, um, you know, overall and the capital campaign piece as well. Um, maybe just frame just more simply that the district is going to raise the money to do more. You know, um, capital campaign, that phrase probably doesn't really resonate well with, mm -hmm. you know, with folks on the street. But the fact that the district is going to do work right. to mm -hmm. put something with it right. does, you know, and that's what we got to the streets. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a certain core mm -hmm. that do not truly understand. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. All right. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, it looks like we have um, four action items. And the first is the bond proposal authorization resolution. So can I get a motion? President Baker, I'd like to make a motion for the bond approval resolution. Second. I'll second. All right. OK, so whenever you're ready, let's call the vote. Pete. Unless, is there any further discussion? <clears throat> I should. Okay, good. Go ahead. Dr. Randall? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Feld? Yes. Dr. Flores? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Mr. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Pass all ease. All right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we can get that like, like a day ahead of time. We don't have to wait till. The August date on right. at a four. Okay, <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> hey, for traffic to get in the way. So, um, all right, the next is um, Student Advancement Foundation donations request. Um, 
make the motion first and then invite our guests up or uh, would first? the board like to hear first I think so yeah. yes, yes. Before we make okay. the president Baker and members of the board I would like to ask John and Michelle to come up and present mm -hmm. You got plans for that yardstick? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's just I'm just like afraid. Like, I really somebody's, it. I know somebody's going to get I their knuckles. I carry around a, a yardstick with me. Was there me. a reason um, for that? <laughs> to, to, their, to our friends at MLive, Jim Harger was cleaning out his basement and found an old Helmholtz home decorating oh. Um, oh. Oh. yardstick. Oh, okay, so, and I don't have one. My sisters do, and I'm mad Very at them good. for it. <laughs> so, so I now have my own version. So. <laughs> Our man Helmholtz yeah, did a wonderful job. It's not a weapon, though. And Monica brought it to me, so thank you, Monica Scott. <laughs> um, well, yeah, thank you. Um, we're here um, to uh, get your advanced approval uh, for the proposals to the Student Advancement Foundation. As you know, they're our, our, our greatest champion, our biggest supporter, and have been there to support the students of Grand Rapids Public Schools. And so uh, many of the programs are things that have been um, going ongoing that were funded in the previous years. And so I'll walk through just a handful of them that are there. This is a total of about $140,000 in requests. One is the Blandford field trips. This is for first and third grade. The one change to this is that based on the teacher feedback at the third grade level, they wanted a little bit longer time than in, in years past uh, when we had a different agreement with Blandford, there was a much longer field trip experience. And instead, we aligned it with what the other school districts are doing and using kind of off their menu, which is aligned with the core curriculum. And so um, they said they want a little bit longer. So this is a little bit more than what was previous years, but that's at $28,000, and that will ensure a two-hour experience for the third graders instead of the hour and a half. Um, and that will, between the two, that serves um, close to 2,500 students throughout the district. Every first grader, every third grader, minus center-based students. Second one is Teach for the Watershed. This is something that we uh, engage with the West Michigan Environmental Action Council and Groundswell uh, to, for all of our sixth graders. And the sixth graders go through various uh, watershed projects. And this ask is for $25,000. Art Music Supplies, which is, this is one of the longest standing investments I believe that SAF has made um, since sports and libraries, is providing those additional art and music supplies above and beyond what we're able to provide through the BOE, uh, which really wasn't sufficient to really meet the needs of the students in art and music. That's at $45,000. <clears> Um, the K-6 art enrichment trips. Mm -hmm. Every student in grades K through 6 go through art enrichment trips. And so it's trips to the Civic Theater, it's trips to the Frederick Meyer Garden, to Grand Rapids Art Museum. A uh, number of those entities that um, would not be possible if it wasn't for the generous support from SAF that covers the cost of these trips and ensures those children across K through 6 have access to these arts and cultural organizations in our community. Uh, the next one is Immerse, and this is the fifth grade version of the museum school to make it like, as simple as e this is where fifth graders and the goal is eventually for all fifth graders in the district right now it's targeted to a, a, rel a, a rel relatively small number um, that where they have a week-long immersed experience at the Grand Rapids Public Museum mm -hmm. it's modeled after the design thinking place-based model we'll be doing for the museum school itself teachers get professionally developed in, around these and how they can incorporate lesson plan you incorporate the museum museum, the archives, and all the assets and resources of the museum into their, their daily lesson planning for an entire week. That's for $7,000. Lastly is K-3 libraries. In previous years, the, the Student Advancement Foundation had funded uh, the refresh and restock of our libraries across the district. First, they funded just the replenishment of the libraries themselves, and then there was an ongoing kind of upkeep and, and maintenance. This year, we're looking to be a little more targeted. Uh, as you know, and, and I think you've been presented to, if not at the ac academic committee, we have a pre-K through 12th grade literacy continuum that's been developed by the academic team. And as you know, we've been at the forefront of the efforts statewide to focus in on third grade reading. And so the request this year is to really focus in on the library investment K through three. So making sure that the reading materials that are lexiled and exactly where they need That's to right. be to reinforce the academic plan and the pre-K-12 or the K-12 literacy uh, plan. And so we're looking at $10,000 uh, for the K-3 libraries. Again, it's a total ask of $140,000. 
And I think it's important just to note that these are the requests that are from the general fundraising that the Student Advancement Foundation does through the year. So Mindshare, Luncheon, all of those different places where the community really comes out and supports the district. Um, it doesn't include some of the targeted fundraising that we do, like for uh, great sports, the K-8 mm -hmm. Athletics Initiative and things like that. So these are sort of the requests that w um, our committee will be looking at next week that the district wants to help support so many of the great programs you guys are doing. So. Well, thank you, Michelle. I I'm just have to say that these are um, the list. I'm thinking about my children's education right. and what they what would have been missing had this list not That's been. Right. Like, this That's is right. this is quite a bit that really supplemented a lot. Right. It's like it's a big difference. So appreciate it. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Can I get a um, motion to approve the. Uh, donation request from the Student Advancement Foundation. Thank you. Second. Support. All right. Okay. Dr. Randalls. Yes. Ms. Slade. Yes. Dr. Felb. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Tias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Approved. All right. That passes. Um, can a motion for the purchasing agenda? So moved. Support. Acceptance. Second. All right. Okay, Dr. Randalls. Yes. Miss Slade. Yes. Dr. Felb. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. President Baker. Yes. Approved. All right. Um, purchasing agenda passes. Uh, next is a layoff resolution, but you want to ask Sharon to come up? I do. Dr. Baker and members of the board, I would ask, like to ask Sharon Pitts to come forward and share information on the layoff resolution, please. Hello. Good evening, Dr. Baker, Superintendent Neal, board members. Um, as you know, um, as a result of the budget uh, cuts that we had to make, uh, there were staff that um, had to be reduced, and here we have uh, paraprofessionals. Uh, in fact, we reduced, initially we started out with 45 paraprofessionals, but as a result of people leaving and some other changes, we were able to um, fill most of those positions. So these positions that we have um, left that we're bringing to you today, uh, we don't have uh, a place for them. We don't have funds um, for these positions, uh, as well as the support, um, the family support specialist positions as a result of, of uh, budget cuts. But we try to retain as many staff as we can so that we can complete the programs that we have to. But unfortunately, and no one likes to be in this situation, but um, this is really where we are now. Any questions or <laughs> What was the number of staff being laid off? So it'll be uh, just the, uh, what you have today. So 22, I think. That's right. Mm -hmm. 22? Yeah. Mm -hmm. About 22 employees. And that's uh, substantially down from what we originally nice. thought that we were going to have to uh, to lay off, so we're happy about that. Yes, go ahead. You know, sadly, I hope that we're going to see the day that we don't have to go through layoffs for our staff who work so hard. Oh, I yes. mean, they're so key. Absolutely, and, um, and paraprofessionals are really critical are in the critical. classroom. Um, but just because we're doing the layoff right now, there's a chance that as uh, things continue, uh, staff leave, um, that we'll be able to recall them. And that's really our hope is that we can sure. recall them um, sometime when school starts because we do know they are they are needed, mm -hmm. critical. And we've had lots of recalls. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, um, it, it continues to to happen, uh, but it is, it does put employees in a flux and mm -hmm. we don't like that, in right. fact, unfortunate. No other questions? All right, can I get a motion to support the layoff resolution? Support. 
No, I, I'd like to have a motion. Can somebody? I'll make a motion that we approve the request. Support. Professionals. Support. Out of the So we're all support, okay. Well, or the grant. Oh, okay. Dr. Randalls. Yes. Ms. Slade. Yes. Dr. Fowles. <clears throat> yep. Dr. Flores. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Mr. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. Mrs. Baker. Yes. All right, can I get a motion for the uh, consent agenda grouping? Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Okay, Dr. Randalls. Yes. Mr. Slade. Yes. Dr. Feld. Yes. Dr. Flores. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. Mr. Baker, President Baker. Yes. Consent agenda approved, Mr. President. Señor <laughs> Presidente. <laughs> All right, discussion items. We have uh, no discussion items. Um, public comment for agenda or non-agenda items. Are there any cards? I, have, I have no cards. Any late requests for public comment? Um, I see none. Superintendent comments. President Baker and members of the board, I really do want to thank you for uh, accepting the request for the resolution for the bond proposal. I do think that the time, I know the time is right, um, and I just appreciate the support. And I want the public to know that this is the right board. This is the right board to do this now for the children of the city. So I appreciate the support. All right, can board member comments, I'll start from left to right, start with Dr. Paul. I guess I just want to reiterate that there has been such a substantial, lengthy process leading up to this bond, and the timing is absolutely right. I, I have utter confidence <coughs> supporting and, and advocating for this bond, and there's no question in my mind that this is going to be an extraordinary investment in our community that um, we will all be pleased that we got there. So I, I will be out there as much as I can. I've been in circles already. I was in a um, group of nonprofit <coughs> leaders, and they were questioning at what level they could do advocacy, and they were asking because they want to support the GRPS bond because they feel so strongly about it. They recognize yeah, wonderful. it. Wonderful. It's good. Mr. Ross? No, just excited. No comment. Okay. <laughs> Reverend Matias, don't I well, seem I think, excited? Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I said, don't I seem excited? <laughs> yeah, you seem excited. <laughs> but if you guys know Raynard, this, know Raynard, though, this so. is excited. He's really right. excited <laughs> now. We can tell. We, can't we see know he's excited. We can tell by his face. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to see even um, the student advancement and, and just the, the funding there, the, the commitment that comes from the community in so many very different places, I think sometimes our parents don't realize because yeah. that benefit to me as, as a GRPS uh, parent is feels like nothing. Yeah. But, in, but in reality, a lot of people have um, come together to make it easier for my kids to kind of to, to have that experience. So, so for us to support, for example, this bond um, is really critical as a, as a broader community saying yes to, to our, our public schools. So appreciate that. Yeah. Slate. I guess I would support that whole concept, and I really think the community is with us in this. We've done mm -hmm. a lot of work. Um, we get a lot of support, and I think we just need to continue on with what we're doing. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, with our kids. Mm -hmm. No comment. Pastor Moody. I'm, I'm ready to get started with the bond uh, and get those talking points because there are a lot of people out there who do have some questions, That's right. and there are certain. Uh, <coughs> Uh, groups who are forming right now to kind of challenge some of the things that we're doing. But I think we're going to win overall. And I think that's important. I also want to acknowledge that, you know, we, we've lost a retired teacher, uh, Mr. Randall Burton. I want to keep his family in, in prayer. And also we have a board member, Mr. Dave Legrand, who lost his father a week ago. We want to keep him lifted up as well, too. So um, with that, um, let's get the talking points to me, man, so we can get some stuff rolling. Mm -hmm. 
Ms. LeGrand. Uh, yeah, uh, President Baker, you, t you know, you know, t you talked about being out in other communities and, and seeing uh, facilities that are really great. And I remember when I was asked at a high school that shall remain nameless, but it was in GRPS, I was asked to go do talk about vocation mm. about a decade ago. And I remember walking into that high school and seeing lockers that hadn't been painted since who knows when and walls that hadn't been painted and think and remembered thinking that the central message that building was giving what was giving was we don't care about you mm -hmm. and you know the bricks and mortar that we provide for our kids the the physical space that we provide for them is really a reflection of our community's values and how much we value the kids and the parents who bring their kids to <clears throat> us and and how much we are able to how well we're able to function as a community and i'm you know really glad that grand rapids is what it is i'm glad that grand rapids has successfully supported things that we value like roads and um parks and goodness knows i like roads and i like parks but i like schools a lot more so i hope the community can come out and support this mm -hmm. Well, I think we have tremendous needs. I think uh, many of our kids go without, and certainly facilities and security are, continue to be um, very, very important to our district and to our families. Um, I think it's very hard not to, to support a, a bond proposal at, at this time. Um, I'm hoping that the public will join us in supporting. Um, I think we've been very strategic. Uh, you know, we've been assured by staff that uh, the community is behind it with uh, over 70 presentations in the community. So well, let's, let's be hopeful. Thank you. I, um, you know, I think that John made a good point of connecting this to the, the gifts from the Student Advancement Foundation, the work of the community, that, that this is a community that's behind Grand Rapids Public Schools. And we can look all the summer programs that are happening this summer mm -hmm. about our children, helping our children be better prepared for um, coming to school in the fall. And so, um, so I wrote this down, work of the community, that it isn't just that we hope that the community supports it and votes for it, but that actually this, the community sees it as their work. And I think that mm -hmm. um, okay, Wendy's mm -hmm. point that the nonprofits are already looking for ways to part, part of it, that this is a Grand Rapids campaign. This is a campaign for Grand Rapids, for the city of Grand Rapids. And um, so I'm really excited about this, and we hopefully that people will pick this up as as the call to the city to do this work. Um, and I'd also like to, I was thinking about, on my way over here, about David Legrand's month. And uh, it's exhausting knowing mm -hmm. what he's, mm -hmm. his month, from the loss of the father, the um, wedding for his son, and... Um, and other big opportunities and challenges that have come his way. So anyway, I just want to say um, thanks for being a part of Grand Rapids Public Schools, David. So with that, um, we'll close. Nice and low. Oh.